keep listening to the bells. Noticing how the body receives them. I feel like it's a really special opportunity for those of us who are here in the physical space to be able to receive the clock chiming and it'll chime again in an hour so we'll get another chance and I said in a couple of minutes with them <laughs> the conversation moved on so I'll invite the bell here a couple of times I just want to invite you to notice how it feels in your body to receive that arising and passing of sound because those bells this bell just like all the thoughts in the mind and all the physical environments all of the sounds all of the tastes all of the touches all of the six sense bases, those experiences that arise in the six sense doors, they're all arising and passing. There are certain conditions that are sufficient, such that they arise, they're sustained for a while, and then they pass away. Everything is like that. You, me, today, the city, this country, you can't find a thing, a thing, a lowercase d, dhamma, that isn't like that, that isn't arising due to conditions, that isn't temporary, that isn't absent of a separate self, it's existence dependent on X, Y, and Z. And we'll deal with this bell since I was a little late with the church bell. So you can keep your eyes open, you can close your eyes, you can gaze upon something like really for real, whatever works for you. These candles can always be support for something to gaze upon. And just receive the bell. There'll be a little invitation, and then three full invitations. Excuse me, a little wake-up sound, and then three full invitations of the bell. And I'm not sure if you can hear it on Zoom or not, so we'll see how it goes. Oh, great! Thanks, John. So enjoying the bell. And some phrases from Thich Nhat Hanh. Listen, listen, the sound of the bell brings me back to my true home. As much as you're able, noticing how it feels in the body, in the heart, in the chest, in the body broadly, in the neck and the shoulders, noticing how it feels in the body to receive the sound of the bell, the arising, the sustaining, and the into your direct internal experience. And then one more for good measure, that extra special one. I invite you to pay particular attention to the 
ending of the sun, the cessation, the fading away. Noticing the residue of that experience as Sarotejaniya reminds us everything leaves a residue. How's it feel in the body to have given attention to have attended to the sound of the bell? What do you notice? Just noticing it. so you can find the words to tell me or yourself or someone else. But rather an invitation to tune in and touch in and to see what's here, how it actually feels inside of you in this moment in time. However you're feeling is okay. It's just fine. It might be pleasant, it might be unpleasant. Maybe never pleasant or unpleasant, but we call neutral. You're welcome to continue to sit with your eyes closed if that's supportive for you or to open them again. After listening to the bell, I like to begin the evening with a little bit of a hello go round. You're all free to pass. Or you can just not do anything, you'll know you're passing. And we do various things to take care of ourselves. And anything that we can find that reduces our suffering without harming someone else, that's worthy, worthy action, wholesome action tend to ourselves and care for ourselves. So we'll go around and share our names and pronouns. And then one word, what's here now with you, in you, for you? What you got going on? What's the state of your heart mind? And while we're going around, exploring if it's possible to continue in this investigation of how it lands in you to listen and to share. So that there's a cultivation of presence through all the various activities of life, right? Not just like when we're meditating kind of thing, but, well, I'm interested in being present in my life, to myself, right? And how do we practice that? By practicing it. That's it. Right? It's not something that we can practice by thinking about it or remaining on it. It's like, well, yeah, we try it on. We do it. So that's what we're here for tonight, is to do it, to be in the practice. And I'm going to go first, and I'm going to pass it next to Lisa, and we can follow the pass and get another chance to do whatever you need to do. I want to go this direction, though. And so Augusta, she, her, remembering to practice tuning to my body as I'm sharing. Noticing what's alive right now. Before I put that hat back on of being a participant, I want to invite you once more to check in and see what's here. Maybe what that sentence, I can boil it down to a word, is to encapsulate what's actually going on for you in this moment. So that you can then listen as we go around. And then when it gets to you, you already have, have it. And I'll feel like, oh, 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 oh. Maybe nothing's coming up. I mean, there's a ton of stuff. 
can it be distilled to one word? No sentence is necessary. And passing is just fine. Augusta, she, her. Exhale. She heard, I feel swinging. Is that the word? Is that a word? Swinging? Hmm. Is that? <laughs> okay, he, him, I feel relieved. Michael, he, him. I want to remind folks in Zoom um, if you uh, you can choose to speak or if you want to put it in the chat, I can read it out loud or, of course, pass them. Um, so my name is Tia. She or they are fine for me. I am in San Francisco. And what is alive for me at the moment is settling. Got to got a movement going on. Sebastian, if you're up for it. I am. Hi, sorry, I can't activate my video for some reason. Um, my name is Sebastian, he, him, and my word is connected. John, are you next? Yeah. John, he, him, overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Well, we're just doing names and pronouns, and if there's a word that's alive for you, or you can just pass, of course. But welcome, glad you're here. And if you don't unmute, that'll be a pass, and we'll give you another chance in a minute. No rush, no pressure, no urgency. No see what's in the body. Continue on the room. I'm Peter from your role, and uh... I'm Steve, he, him, and the word that's coming up for me is probably worry. Thank you. Well, we've got another opportunity if you're wanting to chime in. Oh, go ahead, Tia. Um, I just want to check that that mic is on. <laughs> button to push on it, because I, I can hear problem. you, but I feel like I'm hearing you through Augustus' mic. Check my. Well, I can hear you. I'm going to leave it there. But yeah, thanks. We're going to go around again. So maybe next time we'll remember to check that mic. Thanks a lot, Tia. All right. Well, would you like to? No, I'm just going to give you a beat. You don't have to do anything, but if you're wanting to. Along, then we get to sit with for the main event. So finding the posture, finding the posture, <clears throat> my teacher voice, finding a posture that's upright and comfortable, in which you can be at ease and also alert. Where sitting might be just it, or maybe you want to make some modifications. If you want to sit cross-legged on the floor, there are, I like to fold up the blanket and put a cushion on it, so there's stuff like that over on the wall or you could sit like I am in the chair and there's no need to cross your legs right just available if that's supportive for you those of us who are raised in the United States often find that having our feet flat on the floor just sitting in a chair is is very supportive the idea is to find a posture that's supportive full stop this idea of cross-legged just comes because this practice came from India, right? Like that's what people are sitting around. It's not like it's the posture. 
sometimes we forget that. <laughs> I like to remind people that. Lying down is also totally cool. That's my formal posture, actually, when I'm on retreat or I'm practicing at home for at least seven years now. That's been my posture since I uh, injured in my knee. Maybe like at eight or nine years now, but and it it works. And standing, walking, all the postures are equally useful, and all of them have the possibility to support awakening. One is no better than the other. So each time you settle into practice, or you have the intention to practice, like find the posture that's supportive in the moment. Remember, you're in an activity, and suddenly mindfulness arises. That's the greatest gift. And that happens more often as we practice in different postures. Because the body gets to know, I can tune into myself. Even here, it's not like, oh, this special posture, and da 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 da. And if you're developing a home practice, having a posture that's like your go to posture for intentional cultivation of mindfulness can be super helpful because it does start to let the heart mind body know, oh, this is what I'm doing now. So it's a, it's a both and, like most things are. All right. So finding your posture for this practice period and letting, if, if you can, letting your heart and body guide you into that posture rather than being guided by thought or a story in your mind, a sense of should or supposed to, or to tune into the body to listen and discern what would be supportive in the moment. For this heart, my body, as it is expressing itself now. Feeling the body resting. Perhaps experiencing the heart mind receiving the moment. Whatever might be predominant. Sensations in the body, and the feeling of the chair, or the floor, whatever the body might be making contact with, maybe the experience of where the body is touching the body. feeling in the mouth or the throat, or a taste or a smell. Or a feeling in the nostrils or some nasal cavity. cavity. Whatever is being observed, noticed or recognized is worthy of your attention. This too can be noticed, recognized, met with awareness, kindness, sati. Simply noticing what you are aware of. 
and that you are aware. You're aware of something, my voice perhaps, or the content of the words, or how the words are landing, a way that there is resonance or dissonance. Just notice, oh, it's like this. And noticing can extend to the sound of the bell. Once again, a little wake up sound, and then three invitations of the bell to support our settling into the present moment, settling in, resting into the body, to the here and now. Body. The body is always in the presence. And as we attune to the body and tend to the body, the mind is brought, the heart is brought into the presence. Allowing the body to rest. Inviting the body to rest. Tuning to the experience of the body resting.
noticing how it feels. When we stop ourselves as a gift of rest. Simply receiving the experience of this body. Thoughts will arise, will become aware of something other than this body resting here. No problem. These experiences can also be known. These two are conditioned experiences. They arise because of causes and conditions. That's just how it has come to be. That is just how it has come to be. No problem. Life can arrive in time. Not a problem or no problem. It's just like this. Notice. That's the gift of the practices the noticing. A meeting experience. And maybe the experience is a direct experience. It's meeting it. The experience is happening through the eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, mind. Sometimes we can just meet that direct experience like Bahia, just like, oh, just meeting it. Sometimes. And sometimes there's a reaction to or relationship to the direct experience. There's some liking it or not liking it or some story about how it would be even better or if only this, 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 that. Like, yeah, yeah, the mind wants to get involved. And that too can be known. That too is simply conditioned experience arising. It lasts for a while and it passes away. It's all permanent moment. We can practice to simply meet it all. We practice so that we might simply meet it all. It's not like just because we sit down and begin to practice doing it, we can do it. Like that's not the goal. That's not how it works. But we practice, we cultivate a new habit, a new track in the neural pathways. Training ourselves to simply meet experience. Oh, it's like this. Liking, not liking, kind of checking out. Okay, oh, that's what's happening right here. No problem. My pen right.
noticing that you are aware. we notice that awareness because of a sound that is heard. Or a body sensation that is felt. Resting. Opening. Receiving. When we notice thoughts in the mind, it can be interesting to notice our relationship. Sometimes the thoughts are an indication of our relationship to the direct experience. There's also the relationship to the thought or the relationship to the relationship. Perhaps there's a pushing away or chasing after that we can recognize. Or we might become aware of a view or a belief. Sometimes we notice that the relationship to what is recognized, whether it's a thought or an external experience received through the body, we notice that our relationship to that is, okay, there's like a copacetic feeling. I'm okay with this. These things, the greed, aversion, delusion, which is often expressed as view or belief, and okayness, these four things are what Sada Bhutajaniya calls the attitude of the mind. And these two can be known. And then in knowing them, there is freedom. Well, it's like this. And this knowing of greed or aversion or delusion, and 
knowing of it is not greedy or aggressive or deluded. The knowing of it is seeing clearly. And that's freedom. That's the bottom right here, right now. Oh, okay. Not cause. It's kind of we're trying to not be greedy or trying to not be aversive or trying to not be deluded. We're practicing to notice what's actually happening here and now. Moment by moment, again and again. What is actually happening? Through that cultivation, freedom is born. Awareness leads to more awareness. And in time, awareness leads to wisdom quite naturally. And then wisdom does the magic work of letting go. We don't have to do it. We can't do it. We would have done it if we could do it. So we can sit back and rest and open. To the direct experience of each arising. Noticing aversion. Oh, this is what aversion feels like in the body. Noticing joy or grief. Noticing whatever might actually be arising for you. And then sometimes what's arising is actually too big for us to be with. That's okay, then we actively change the channel. Maybe we're kind of checking out and there's a sleepiness that's arising. It can be really skillful to stand up. We just shift the energy as if you're going to stand. It helps to increase wakefulness. Or opening the eyes and looking at a candle or a blank spot on the floor or a wall. Or getting curious about the feeling of sleepiness. Oh, this is what sleepiness feels like. No problem. It's the story that the moment should be different than it is that creates so much suffering. The moment's fine. The moment's arising as it's arising due to the causes and conditions that are here or that preceded it. All right. Maybe there's a really contracted heart or some fear or despair or something that's, that's bigger than your current cultivation of mindfulness can meet. Because let me tell you, mindfulness can meet anything. But maybe in this moment, the mindfulness isn't strong enough to meet what's arising. Change the channel. Change the channel. Bring in metta, or go to the breath, or really root in the body, or root in sound. You can practice with any myriad ways of practice that you came in here with. If 
you're feeling activated or overwhelmed, you can open your eyes and start to take in the colors and shapes of the space. Or focus on the corners. For those of us who have trauma, we can get activated. And looking around at all the corners in the space can really help to regulate. So anywhere two lines meet is a corner help stabilize the nervous system. If you're somewhere where you can look out at the view, look at the horizon, is also very stabilizing for the nervous system if you're getting activated. Or maybe you came in here with a practice of resting into awareness of the breath that's always available to you. You can go back to that when you need it. And then once you get more regulated or settled, you might expand out again to be, be with what's arising and passing. This way we increase our capacity. We increase our resilience and our ability to need life. Life in all of its complexities. Our ability to recognize our conditioning, what Andrea Fella calls our habit patterns, or take that how it refers to as habit energy. We can recognize them. And you start to release on your own as they're met. Whatever it is, it's conditions, it's nature, and we're from. Are feeling at all? It's like this, okay. Got it. Curious about your own direct experience. Interesting. It's been said that the highest form of love is attention. What if you gave yourself your own attention? Interested and curious about the direct experience arising and passing in your own heart, in your own gut, in your own being.
like a really, really good friend, one of those fantastical, imagined dear friends that just witnesses with love and kindness in their heart. No advice, no trying to fix, no suggestion, but pure presence. Offering ourselves this gift of love and care. Open. Where? Mm -hmm. 
Resting, opening, cultivating curiosity. When you notice that sleepiness is present, we can be skillful to see if there can be a little more interest, a little more curiosity about that experience. How does it feel? How does the sleepiness feel? It can also be helpful to bring in a little bit more wakefulness and alertness into the body. Lengthening out through the spine, through the crown of the head, broadening out through the shoulders. For, for us, sleep it's much harder to practice. For most of us, we need to be awake to cultivate wakefulness, to cultivate awareness, receptivity, curiosity. Recommitting to this wakefulness for the last few minutes of this practice in the still posture. Open, receptive, curious.
gradually expanding the field of awareness of the movement, inviting the body to move in whatever ways feel good to this body in this moment in time. Continuing to practice that listening in and discerning.